What's up? This is TJ with Warrior Dead. Tonight we're filming bicep and tricep workout. I'm going to film the whole workout. I'm going to film it in sections. I'm new at uh, doing this. I don't have a camera person with me, so I'm doing this with a tripod. So bear with me a little bit. And I'm not a techie person. I, it just took me 15 minutes to figure out how to set this thing up. <laughs> so bear with me. All right, let's dive into this. I lucked out and I was able to get a tricep and bicep station next to each other. Um, if you don't, you can do everything that you need to do with just one station. Um, and I always recommend starting your tricep workout, especially as we get older, with uh, rope, pull, uh, the rope tricep extensions, or pull downs if you want to call them that, um, because they are easiest on your, uh, the tendon that ties into your elbow, so you don't get tendonitis, you don't get elbow pain. Um, straight bar can be harder on your wrists. Angled one isn't okay if that's all you got, or a cambered um, bar is okay. The most ideal to start with, to do your warm up and your first set, your first group of sets with, your first exercise with, is the rope. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do those, and I'm going to superset it because I lucked out and got the rope where I can set it up on the rope for uh, hammer curls. Um, but if I didn't have that next to me and I only had one machine, you can do an entire tricep workout literally with just this one station and then you can bring dumbbells over and an easy bar over or a straight bar over and you can superset your biceps and triceps all in this spot and you can do various different movements from starting with your warm-up movement which is always going to be a movement that's close to your body and straight down um, to moving further away to start hitting the longer head but you don't want to hit the longer head until you're further into your workout when that muscles warmed up, lubricated, those tendons are lubricated, and all that good stuff. You want to get that oil up out of the oil pan and into the engine, lubricate all those parts before you start hitting the bigger muscle. The, basically, the, when you're hitting the longer head, it puts a lot of stretch and stress on the tendons and the muscle, which is good, but only once it's warmed up. So you always want to start your tricep. You don't want to start it with overhead movements, like a dumbbell here, or ropes, or, uh, or one arm, overhead extensions or skull crushers when you're lying down on a bench. None of those overhead movements in the beginning. Everything close to you, get that muscle nice and warmed up. So I'm going to jump right in and just follow along and, uh, and I'll just offer commentary and suggestions as I go. I'm going super lightweight in the beginning just to pump blood into that muscle, get that muscle group moving. I don't have to, I don't have to do a lot of holding and squeezing yet, just move that muscle get the blood in there. Get the oil out of the oil pan and into the engine. Lubricate those pistons, lubricate those parts. Lubricate the tendons and ligaments and the muscle bellies themselves. Fill them up with blood first before you start hammering them hard. See, I'm already starting to slow down. I didn't even count, you don't even count your reps. You're gonna be doing in the neighborhood, I started to do a warm-up set before, before I had difficulty with my camera probably in the neighborhood of 15 to 20. That's good. Boom. Let's do this, guys. Because I'm all about training smart as we get older. When we're a young kid, we can do a bunch of stupid crap and start with skull crushers and start too heavy and get away with it. As we get older, we can't. If we get away with it, it's only temporary because we're setting ourselves up for injury. This is just a nice overall pumping blood into it. It's easy on the wrists. Same with that. The ropes are a great thing to start with because they're easy on the wrists. They're a great way to pump blood into the overall muscle on the bicep and on the tricep before we start getting into isolating movements and heavy compound movements and just more high demand impactful movements. <clears throat> I can already feel them filling up with blood. And then uh, just rest for 30 seconds and then I'm going to up at a plate, up at a plate. So let me, I'm almost not even counting my first two to three sets. Or at least the first two sets. That's just sort of warming everything up, getting the oil out of the oil pan and into the engine. 
Now back on triceps. Oop, I got to up it a plate. The amount of weight does not matter. It's selecting a weight in the beginning, your first set, where you can do about 20 reps. And then just work your way up from there until you can get into a rep range of, uh, depends upon how advanced you are and what week it is. Some weeks I'll go heavier where I want to get myself up into a rep range where I'm only can go 8 to 10 or 8 to 12 or I'll go higher volume and I'll go 10 to 15 on something like triceps. Today I'm going to do a mixture of both. So I'm going to just keep doing these high reps and so I'm just going to up at a plate, up at a plate, up at a plate. Two, three, four. Now I'll start slowing it down a little bit. And I'm flexing my abs. I'm tightening my stomach while I do it. I'm arching my back though, sticking my chest out, keeping my shoulders down. You don't want to hunch your shoulders forward and, and, and go like this because then you're keep causing uh, future damage to your shoulders, uh, rotator cuff. So chest is always out. Later on, we're going to start stepping away from the machine and changing the angle and hit the longer head because you got the three different heads of the tricep. So I'm not going to go too much into technical terms. I just want to keep this kind of simple and just understand the concepts of starting closer and then moving further away after everything's warmed up. And now, well, when you start to max out, now that I'm on my second warm-up set, now what you do is you mash these two together, the plastic things, and you can bang out a few more reps. When you're spreading them apart, you can only hit so many. Mash them together and you'll be able to bang out a few more. Seven, eight, nine, ten, I'm not gonna go, let's not go too crazy yet because it's only my second set. I'm not gonna count the warm-up set I did before I started fiddling with the camera. And then I'm gonna guide you over here with me. All right. Up this, one more plate. Just keep adding a plate. And you can lean back on these. Tighten your stomach and lean back and it'll increase your range of motion a little bit. Now go ahead and keep these separated and then put, mash them together and get, I can get five more reps in. Shake it out for a second and then I'm going to go back over to the tricep. Got here late today, had a long work day, so it's already 8 o'clock at night right now. Six, seven, and now mash them together because I can't get any more. Shake those out for a second. Let's go back over here to biceps. Add one more plate. See how I'm leaning back? Back is nice and straight, actually arched even, but I'm leaning back. Feel them filling up with blood. When you do this, especially as you start to grow, you'll notice more. The more muscle you put on, you'll st your skin will get tight as it fills up with blood. You can probably see them filling up with blood. Let's see if I can find a spot like here. It's not so much yet. But anyway, so now I've done a few sets there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start moving a little quicker through this because it's getting late. So uh, now you see me start to change my angle. Now I'm gonna start moving away. Now that I've got enough blood in there where my tendons are nice and warmed up, now it's time to start moving away from the apparatus a little bit. Start hitting the longer head a little bit more. Up at one plate again. Just ease your way up the, up the stack. See now. <clears throat> My stomach's tight while I'm doing it though. No weight belt. Do not want to wear a weight belt all the time. I actually took a picture of it earlier. I'm going to make a post about that. I just got my first Warrior Dad, my Warrior Dad logo on my weight belt. But I haven't worn a weight belt in a few years on purpose to strengthen my core and let my body be the stabilizer, not be dependent on that belt. Um, there's only certain heavy compound moves where you need to use a weight belt. Let's get into this. One, two. Now let's do some holding squeezes. Now that we're good and warmed up, we can start to throw in other principles. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm maxed out there, so I'm just gonna mash them together. Three. <clears throat> so it's like you're mashing these two ends together. There, I maxed out there. Come back over here. Just gonna bang out a couple more sets and then we're, and then we're gonna go ahead and move over there. Okay, get a little sip of water, Let's do one more, one more round, and then I'm going to turn the camera off a little bit and uh, let him work in with me, and then, uh, and then I'll start filming when I get to the next exercise movement that we're going to do. So next, uh, every time I switch movements, I'll lower a weight and test it out and do a feeler set. So now we do overheads. This one, you can lean against this. Some of them will have a pad. Um, if they don't and there's just, it's free floating, it's really hard to do these because it's pulling on your body. You need something you can brace against. And again, on these, I'm gonna flex my abs. You can, you can actually get a bit of an ab workout while you're doing this exercise. <clears throat> like every time I extend out, I, flex my, I can flex my abs. So I'm gonna aim this this way just a little bit. There we go. All right. And again, now I can mash these together because I can't get another rep. I can mash them together and get a few more reps. <laughs> Just a couple more. Now let's move it over here again. Boom. Up the plate. Down. There. I'm gonna continue to do a full. So now we are gonna do uh, overhead skull crusher style movement, but a little behind the head and on an angle, followed by uh, um, easy bar uh, curls. So I'm a little bit busy tonight, so I can't get the best angles, but let's see. I'm on this bench right here, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna bring the bar behind my head. That's gonna get a greater stretch, because if I only come in here, then I can just do that on with the ropes. 
but I want to come up over my head and get a further stretch on the belly. That's only now because I've already done my warm up sets and gotten a good pump going before I put that stress on those tendons because overhead movements are going to put stress on the tendon that ties into your elbow. So if you're starting with movements like a dumbbell like this or overhead things or skull crushers, if you start your tricep workout with those, you're going to set yourself up for injury. Easy bar curls. This easy bar has a little bit of an interesting angle to it. This is a little light. Oh, it's too light, but let me go ahead and just, I don't want to let the muscle cool down too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a high volume set. Like if you grab something that's too light, yeah, I've been busy setting up the camera and you don't want to let the blood start to leave the engine. I don't want to let the oil out of the engine. I want to keep the oil up into the parts. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a high volume set just to keep the blood flowing into the biceps, into the arms. Keep it full of blood, which is basically keeping that engine warmed up, keeping those parts lubricated so that I can redline that engine without damaging it. See, if you start your, truck, you start your uh, sports car and you start redlining it right off the bat, you're causing damage to the parts. But if you get, it, get them warmed up, get the oil out of the oil pan, up into those engine parts, then and you can redline it and it'll respond well and grow and perform for you. Okay, so that's the next movement in this in this series. I'm gonna I need to save be conservative on my battery. So I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna chime in every time I move to another area and do another style of exercise. I'll come on, I'll chime in, I'll give you some of the reasons why I'm doing things, some of the things that go through my mind, share some of those inside tips with you. Now I'm good and warmed up, and I'm gonna start increasing the weight. Uh, and I'm gonna do now four working sets of this and that. But this is also more advanced. If you were newer, for, for example, I may only have you do two warm-up sets uh, over on the ropes, for example, uh, and then two working sets, and then do move out, and then flip around and do two overheads, or two, no, I'd have you do two close, two sets close, uh, supersetted with the bicep hammer curls with the rope, or with dumbbells. Remember, with dumbbells, start together, I'll show those to you on the next uh, exercise. You start together, and then when you start to max out and you can't do any more, uh, then switch to singles. And whether that's a hammer star curl or a this or more of a peak cur a curl. A hammer curl, you can even see the bicep. See the difference? So a hammer curl is gonna get the longer, full-bodied portion of the bicep, and twisting it is gonna get more of a peak. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off. I'm gonna keep doing these working sets. Actually, let me finish where I started earlier. I digress. So if you were new, for example, I'd have you do two close-up sets, two standing a little further away sets, two sets overhead, all the while supersetting it with whatever bicep. It's not that important what you hit on biceps, especially when you're new, because you're gonna stimulate growth no matter what. Uh, and then, I'd switch over to something more long head focused, like an overhead like this. Um, we, those ones where you see guys do a dumbbell in their grip, in their hands like this, without a partner, those are risky and they're just risking shoulder damage and I don't do those, they're way too risky. They're really inviting injury on your shoulder, on your shoulder, we're just getting it up into place and getting it up there. It's just too risky, so I don't bother with those. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back on it. I don't wanna let the muscles cool down like I was talking about. Um, and so, but if you were new, I'd have you kind of do two of each of the things that I'm showing you tonight instead of four plus warm-up sets. So I'm obviously way more advanced, so I like to add stuff on and max out and push myself. And some weeks I'll do shorter, more condensed workouts, and some weeks I'll do longer, fuller workouts where I really pack a bunch of stuff in. And then, the, But if I pack it in a lot this week, then next week I'll back off a little bit. I'll go super intense, but I won't do as many reps and sets. Um, and I'll change it up. Keeps that body guessing, keeps those muscles stimulated, keeps the nervous system guessing what's going on and firing and hitting all the different training principles so you're getting 
um, fullness and, and muscle bellies while you're building strength at the same time while you're also doing workouts where it leans things down and burns more fat and you can incorporate all these different principles and you can really get amazing results. Talk to you guys soon. Boy or dead. TJ, coming at you in a minute. So, training smart, even though my wrists don't hurt right now, training smart, now is when I do put on the wrist straps. I'll use these for close grip bench, because you're pushing and you're gonna be at an angle that's gonna put pressure on your wrists. And for dips, same thing. So I don't have to wear, you don't have to wear them too crazy tight, or you can tighten them up during your set and then just loosen up. I just got some on, on Amazon. These ones are Wad Nation. Anything you, anyone will do. I like these, it has a little thumb, thumb hook and they're labeled left and right. You do something like this later in the workout. I've already done tons of other sets. The oil's out of the oil pan and up into the machine. The pistons are firing on all cylinders. I'm able to redline it now with no problems. So, let's do this. So I'm not gonna go too close on the grip. Oh, that's right, I have the microphone here, so I don't have to talk to the camera over there. But let me see if this filming angle's good. Get it down a little bit more like that. So I'm not gonna go out here, and I'm not gonna go in here. That's way too much pressure on the wrist. I'm gonna go just inside of shoulder width. Um, I'll go by, for me personally, and it's different based on how wide your shoulders are and what your body build is like. Um, there's the rough section here in the middle, and then there's a smooth section, and then rough again, and then there's the smooth ring. I'll go, for me, I'm about just a half an inch or a quarter inch over from this, the wide smooth. I'll just go a little bit on either side of that. So, like this. So, and I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm not gonna bring it up into here, putting pressure on the shoulder. I'm gonna bring it down towards my, the sternum. So basically my nipple line's here. I'm gonna pull it down to about my nipple line or even maybe even just below. So I'll just go right here on either side. There's a smooth part right here. And I'll just go outside that smooth part, maybe, maybe even yeah, about a quarter inch. Outside on either side. Boom. And you don't touch. It's a narrow range of motion. Elbows are slightly tucked in. So, so, uh, you notice I'm not flaring my elbows out like this, putting the rotator cuff in danger. I'm keeping the elbows tucked. You can't tuck them like this. It's just physically impossible. But you'll tuck them instead of flaring them out. Tuck them like this. So you'll see how I was doing that. Boom. Just coming down. And see, you can't come down to here. Otherwise, you're putting, see, that shoulder joint gets compromised if you come any further. So it's just... That's literally, that's where it naturally stops. I'm gonna do concentration curls, where I hang down and curl up. Because you don't want to ignore the peak. I've done a lot of reps already, so. I don't have to worry about doing high volume, because I've been doing high volume, high rep counts all night. So. At this point, I'm a little bit later in my workout. Been here for an hour. So, and going like nonstop. It takes a little extra time because I'm filming too though. But if I came in here with no camera, anything, one week, I'll come in and just focus in on an hour. Technically, I could even squeeze it down to four or five minutes if I had to. But you can do a one hour workout, you can really, really get an effective, effective workout. Because um, you don't do, worry about cardio on this day. This day is at the most a 10 minute spin on the bike afterwards just to circulate your blood and loosen up your ligaments with no tension on the, on the setting. I should get down here so you can see me. Uh, so it's just about lifting weights on this day. Tomorrow is a cardio day, so tomorrow I'm going to go running. And the next day is a weightlifting day. And then the next day is a cardio. And then the next day is a weightlifting day. And the weightlifting days, I can just focus on building those muscles, 
increasing my metabolism. It's part of a, there's a way to sequence things and to do things and to structure your exercise and your workouts where over time, you can have the metabolism of a 25 year old again, even if you're 50 like me. So let's jump on another set here. I might need to add some more weight on, but let me go ahead and bang out another set before my muscles cool down. That's another thing, you don't wanna wait too long. You wanna keep that muscle full of blood and keep it pumped. And, and in doing so, you'll also increase your metabolism. So let's do another set really quick. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time. I'll just add another 10 pound plate on either side. No reason to get too crazy. Better to train smart. I don't need to show off to anybody. <clears throat> yeah, actually, I've been doing this weight too much. This, this is getting easy. <clears throat> I'm not even counting. I'm just going until I can't do anymore. It's not the number, it's the feeling. Your body doesn't know what the numbers are. It knows the feeling, though. I don't care what the weight number is either. It's all about the feeling and how, and whether I'm gonna go super high volume and try to get like 20 reps in, or whether I wanna to stick to 10 to 15 or eight to 12. And we go right into one more finishing set of close grips. And then I'll make sure to post a written description of this workout in the description. <clears throat> so remember, I'm 50. <clears throat> so if you're younger and you can keep up with this. What's up, Warrior Dad coming back at you here. Okay, now I'm over at the dip machine. I like if you can find a dip machine, they're great. Um, set the handles on a, if you're taller and, and just a naturally bigger guy, you can set them on a wider. On some of them you can kind of flip them to a wide setting or flip them to a narrow setting. On this one they sort of come fixed. A Couple of the key things are, well I have this lapel mic so I don't have to talk right into the camera. So I'm gonna kind of make sure that you're at a good angle here. I want you to kind of be able to see. I'm gonna sit kind of forward in the seat now, the angles are important here. Um, if I come up too high, see how my shoulders just shifted up? That's putting your shoulder, ro your rotator cuff, and the connecting tens tendons that go between the bones in there in a bad position, and that can cause impingement, injuries, and so forth. Oh, now I can switch this around. I was on benches and stuff for the last little while, so I had to head the bill in front. But, so on this one, I don't know. It's kind of light right now, but let me just show you. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go forward on the machine, I'll get up, instead of going like this and then starting, where you, you don't want to put that shoulder in the compromise, so we just want to start up high, sit down into it, and I'm not even touching, I'm barely touching the seat, I have my feet forward, and, uh, and then it's a ra narrow range of motion, <laughs> and my shoulders so my, sh my shoulders are not up like this, and I'm not going leaning forward like this where I'm putting that shoulder in a bad position because I overcame a shoulder injury when I was, from when I was out of shape. I injured it years and years ago, and so I've been able to build this whole physique with an injured shoulder because of these special training techniques and because of all these things that I teach. So, so one of the key things is not flaring your elbows out, keeping your elbows tucked in, and not trying to come up too high. So keeping that down, where you keep your lats flared. If your lats are flared, you, you, I can't even bring my arms higher than this without, boom, bring my shoulders up. Shoulders down, lats flared, and then, and I'm not leaning way forward, I'm not leaning way back, I'm just kind of right in between, chest out, shoulders down, stomach tight, narrow range of motion, squeezing on that bottom, squeezing on that bottom. Oh, that's right, I, I, I'm in, and I'm gonna be especially careful tonight because I slept on my shoulder funny last night. So my girlfriend spent the night. So I forgot about that. I woke up and my shoulder was a little sore this morning. So I'm really gonna keep that range of motion even shorter. And I'm gonna experiment with my angle. 
and I'm not going to go heavy tonight because of that. Yeah, I can feel it, but I'm heading to the uh, physical therapist tomorrow. She'll pop that thing into a healthier position so I can go a little heavier next week. So it's always sort of, I'm, I bring you into my thinking behind things so that you know the why, not just instructing you on what to do, but the how and why I do what I do. <clears throat> and I'm, not, I'm only gonna do a, a couple of sets of these because I can feel it. But, and I'm really gonna be careful to keep that shoulder in a healthy spot. <clears throat> do some partial reps. <clears throat> And then just, I don't want to wrench on it. I don't want to grab something and wrench on it either. I'm just going to open my arms up like this, open up that shoulder. I'm going to go grab something real quick. I'm going to show you one more thing. Hold that. I slept on it really weird. And so it's a little sore today. So I'll put this on the ground. Let's see if you can, I'll put this further away so you can see me better. and then I'll back away from it and, and then down. So I'm pulling, it's pulling out and down. And you'll feel it pulling on the back where the tricep connects in and the back of the shoulder cavity. And that'll help stretch out that, that shoulder cavity and open up the area that I slept on. And then I'll swing it over to the inside a little bit and then back out slowly. Slowly over to the inside a little bit, and then back out. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. And that's good, because triceps, tricep workouts will tighten, tighten this up, and that goes up into your shoulder and can tighten up that shoulder, the back of the shoulder cavity as well. The back of that shoulder structure to the inside. Oh, I can really feel that there too. It's funny, because right here you can feel it, and then bring it over just a few inches, and bam, you can really, I can really feel that. And same thing with this here. I'll show you from this angle. So I'm going down and then extending it out this way. So out and down, out and down, and then get it and you'll feel that stretching on it and then over and back, over and back. And I think that already opened it up quite a bit. I feel some relief already. See, I'm taking you behind the scenes into what I'm actually thinking and doing, not just instructing you on some basic crap. See, that already made a difference right there. It's a little light, but I'm not going to go heavy tonight, see, because i got to play it smart. It's good. See, I'm not going to take you into some perfect world scenario. I'm going to take you into my real life and show you what I think about what I... That, See how that little adjustment I made? I ended up doing that stretch, and now I was able to do this more comfortably. And I'm not gonna go super heavy tonight. Like, I'll go up to like 200 pounds on these. <clears throat> not tonight though, and I've done a lot of exercises tonight. I've done a lot of reps, a lot of sets. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with partial reps. Those partial reps are great. That end of that movement is great on this exercise. And I think my body's telling me it's time to call it a night. I'm gonna go get a little late dinner. I brought a snack that I can nibble on right away. I'm gonna go get a late dinner. I'm just gonna keep the portion size really, really small. And then uh, have my last couple bites of food by 9.30 or so. And then before bed, I'll have a small homemade protein shake with uh, no sugar, uh, just an unsweetened almond milk. Uh, and one scoop of protein that has no sugar in it, no carbs in it, because it's before bed. And a little, and a few greens, a few, a little bit of spinach in there. And uh, I'll drink that before bed. It keeps your metabolism going. It keeps, it feeds these muscles while you're sleeping. It's like thrown coal into the into the furnace, so it's burning and keeps your metabolism burning at a faster rate while you're sleeping. Because we've revved up the metabolism right now. We want to keep it revving high. If we starve it from food, it's going to slow itself down and start reserving things as fat. Just throw some coal in the fire, it's gonna burn hotter and burn through the night. And then I'm gonna, I'll I'm gonna pre-make one 
uh, especially since I work out late like this. I'm gonna pre-make one. So if I wake up to go pee at like 5 a.m. and I'm and I have a, like a little bit of low blood sugar feeling, boom! I just I can go with my eyes closed to the fridge, reach in, grab it, boom, and then go back to bed and sleep until 7:30 or whatever. Make sure I get my rest tonight since I did a late workout. So that is today's workout: biceps, triceps, superset with smart training, intuitive training, a mix of high volume, high reps with lower with with lighter weight and and some heavier weight sets a bunch of supersets. I hit the, all the different angles of the tricep, all the different angles of the biceps. We did some heavy comp, we finished the whole thing with heavy compound movements at the end of the workout, not near the beginning. And all that good stuff. I'm getting tired, I'm hungry. I'm gonna go grab me a quick, uh, quick bite to eat. I'm gonna just keep that portion size nice and small. No reason to just go into a food coma at this time of night. It's a bad idea, because then it's just putting that metabolism to a screeching halt. I'm just gonna go, uh, Get a little, uh, probably a little fish and rice dish at my local restaurant, or maybe even if they have a fresh prime rib. This one place makes an amazing prime rib for super affordable price. It's like $15 and you get this amazing prime rib and baked potato and everything. I'll just literally take a little bit of the baked potato because it's getting late. Um, eat a little bit of that prime rib, save the rest for lunch tomorrow. And, uh, and then I'll have that, and then I'll wait for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll have that protein shake before bed. That's my plan for the night. You guys, have a good one. I'll talk with you soon. TJ with Warrior Dad, signing off.